Mi chiamo Teresa, come Santa Teresa. I was born in 1894, the day when we celebrate Saint Teresa. Tengo 18 anni, I am Mi chiamo Filomena, but everybody called me Mina. I was born in Grass Market, Edinburgh, in 1905, from two Italian Mi chiamo parents. Maria Concetta, e sono l'ultima di sette figli. I was born in Manchester in 1923, and I got married with Carlo from Frosinone. I was 16 then, and Carlo... Mi chiamo Betty. Me. I was born in Barga in 1898. My father was a craftsman. Terrazzo Mi chiamo Giuseppina, and I ran a fish and jeep shop in East Bride with my mother and my two brothers. My father died in the Mi Great War. Mi chiamo Mi chiamo Angela. Mi chiamo Maria Rosaria. Mi chiamo My name is Gloria, and it was Rossi, but it's Gloria Marie Therese. I, I never give my middle names, but it's Gloria Maria Therese. I was born at the very beginning of World War II, which was not a very pleasant time, and I feel that I was born just about three weeks after my grandfather, uh, uncle, and great uncle, and uncle all went drowned in the Arundora Star. So I was brought up in a very big shadow of a disaster in the family and disaster to the Italians. But in my childhood, I think lack of money did come into it, but lack of opportunities for a lot of people came into it. But I was fortunate enough to go to ballet school and my sister was lucky to go to art college. Um, because you were getting grants then, and which did make an awful difference. My name is Anne Pia. Um, I'm a professional woman, third generation Italian. I'm an Italian Scot. It was very hard for me to overcome a lot of the expectations of a woman's role. I was the first woman of my generation, I think, in, in Edinburgh, maybe in Scotland, I don't know, to get to university, for instance. Um, I saw education as a, lib a liberating thing. My grandmother was a great respecter of education. Fata maistra mamma, fata rispetta mamma. It was her dialect, um, because she couldn't read or write, but she believed in education, and so I saw that as a way out. Ho lasciato il paese che pioveva. I left my village, my two sisters and my daughter. My mama, buon anima, used to say, Well, Loretta, 
La vita ti dà e ti piglia! Non c'è tempo per piangere! No time for tears! I pray la Madonna del Loreto for my daughter and our future! Se tutto va bene, in a year or two my daughter will join me. She will go to school and learn English. Che freddo! <laughs> I came to the cemetery earlier this morning. It's 18 years since my mom died. The day of my birthday. Well, my father had to leave. My mom said, eh, e vai avanti, Pietro, dai, vai avanti. È il futuro della nostra famiglia, it's the future for our family. Vai avanti, dai, che, che quando ti manca il sole dell'Italia, if you miss you the Italian sun, I will come and I'll bring it to you. Eh, eh, e ce l'ha portato il sole dell'Italia. She brought me. I came to the cemetery early this morning to tell her che io non me lo scordo come ci sono arrivata. I don't forget. I was born Scottish. Ma la capa dura è tutta italiana. This one is Italian. If you're on all fours and you want to give yourself a stretch, a little catch, you can do that. Here we go. And now think you're sliding through for breath pressure. Your turn. We'll keep going up the scale. Tre tigre contro tre tigre. Tre tigre contro tre tigre. It was hard. Tre tigre contro tre tigre. Tre tigre contro tre tigre. Actually, um, third generation. I don't not a pure Italian as such, because it was my grandparents who came from Italy. Both my parents were born uh, here, one in Glasgow, one in Edinburgh. My grandfather came from Sora in Italy and he came over here as an artisan and he worked in St Anne's Cathedral in Leeds. And my father, he ended up having a lovely shop in Toll Cross manufacturing ice cream. This reminds me of when my grandparents came over. They landed in the grass market, 90 the grass market, six people in one room. That's how they started. It's still there. 90 grass market. 1897. There you are. And they, how they got out of all that, I simply don't know. The business flourished. Um, my brother carried it on after my father died. And they were very famous in Edinburgh for ice cream. Unfortunately, that business is not there anymore. This is a tragedy. Can you imagine? Closing the shop on Sundays. Ma la domenica giorno più buono! And they don't ask to close the shop. Eh? Who told them the ice cream was the same? Eh? God! Dio! Make you become your baby, your lover, your mother, your father. You know, he has to be really uh, beautiful, seeing it very slowly and then closing. War is ugly. Uglier than hunger. We came here because our families were struggling. Hunger. Hunger is difficult to explain. But war? How can I explain war to this creature? Angelo now is three months old and he hasn't met his father yet. My husband is in Italy, at the mountains, fighting against the Austrian. On Sundays at church, we are only women, Scots and Italians. We all have shaking hands. And our heart seems Jesus' heart, con tutte le spine intorno. 
We light candles to Our Lady with shaking hands. And we cradle our children with shaking hands. One more time, just by yourself. From the beginning. No, Methodi. Methodi. very disruptive, not just for the person that goes away, or the, or the woman, but for the children, because children are brought up without the male member of the family. So home life was not what you would say, happy, <laughs> really. And then when my father came back from the army, the first time I really saw him, I was five. And I was always told, my father's coming back, my uncles are coming back. And when he did, I was dis not disappointed, but I didn't like the fact that there were men in the house because you were used to women. And that's, that's a huge thing when you're a child, that you heard about these men, but you didn't know who they were. <laughs> and so life was not... Um, you weren't glorified by the fact your father had returned. Not really. He was like... Um, no, not a threat, but I didn't know him, and he didn't know me, and he didn't know my brother and sister. <laughs> In 1935, my mother was expecting me and Mussolini 
marched into Abyssinia and mummy was very, very upset and she was crying and said to my father, you have to get naturalised because we're going to get thrown out of this country. It was a very bad time during the war, especially when you had a business because people were coming in um, and you were, you know, calling you this and that and the next thing. And our shop was actually en route to the Redford barracks where the soldiers were barracked. And one day, three soldiers came in the shop. Either I was in the back shop, I was a little girl sitting in the back shop, as you did, waiting to go upstairs to bed at all hours, because you were brought up in the back shop in those days. You, didn't, you weren't in a house, you were in the back shop. And um, this soldier pushed his fist through the glass door, and the glass fell on my father's face. All his face was all cut. And I was screaming in the back shop with the waitress, wee waitress, she was called Josephine. And of course the police came, my father was taken away. I remember when war broke out, because we had a business at uh, Slateford and the windows were broken. You know, there was a bit of uh, upheaval then. And my next vivid memory was uh, coming back from school one day and uh, I found my mother and my aunt, who lived with us, very upset. And I didn't know what was going on. And it, uh, it happened that uh, my father, uh, they came for him and uh, he was sent to the Isle of Man. Now, that's always been a little bit of a mystery with us because he was actually a British subject. He shouldn't really have gone to there. I was there 18 months. Honore, famiglia e patria! Motherland. Mussolini, he's the new Prime Minister of Italy. He's the one who called us Italians for the first time. My husband says that the Fascio will bring us some respect here in Scotland. E lui è quello che ha bisogno, il rispetto della gente. Respect? What does this man know about respect, honor, family and motherland? To me, my honor is my family, and my family is my motherland. Benito! I don't like the name, I don't like the man, non, non mi piace, non mi piace niente, ostia, questo porta guai! He will make troubles, and I don't need troubles! Uh, I have my shop with mio marito, with uh, pesce e patate. Uh, uh, what Benito know about my pesce e patate, eh? That was the first summer I spent at the Fashion Club, organized for the Vida Italiana all'estero. First my brother went, and then it came my time to go. I was so excited. The music of the stars reaching down to earth, enchanting us, blessing our dreams with hope. Us, piccoli figli della lupa. Gioventù d'Italia, a chi la vittoria, and we all show to back loudly, a noi, luce, a noi! In the name of God and of Italy, I swear to carry out the orders of my duchy and to serve with all my strength and, if necessary, with my blood, the cause of the fascist revolution! Mussolini's conquered Abyssinia. Ooh, a new land for the Catholic Church to feed with the rosary, the crucifix and the Pope. Now that Mussolini has gassed all those starving people, there won't be many left to feed with prayers. Che la Madonna ci aiuta, donne. Che Maria was a foreigner. And Jesus was a foreigner. When Italy um, declared war on Britain, there were terrible riots in Edinburgh. Um, my mother spoke of this. And she was on her own looking after the shop at the age of 23 in Shrub Hill Cafe, and a phone call came to say, get out of the shop quickly, they're coming for you. She got out of the shop and upstairs, and the first noises of breaking glass were heard. She was on her own. Um, they destroyed virtually everything in that shop. Um, then the police came, um, I think the next night, and took all the Italian men from the age of 16 to 60, including my grandfather, tore them out of the arms of their family and uh, eventually boarded them on that prisoner of war ship. So we were brought up, I would think, in a pretty 
difficult time because of the war, because Britain, of course, was at war with Italy, Italy being on the other side when, with Germany. So um, it wasn't a pleasant childhood, I would think, because you had the, all the men away in fighting in the war, but my father was an alien fighting in the war, although he was born in Edinburgh. Um, so you had, you had a conflicting life of being Scottish, but being Italian and being taken as foreign. But I would say our young life was definitely endorsed by the fact we were Italian. And my mother always said, don't say anything, because not only were we Italian, but we were Catholic. And Catholics in Scotland were not very welcome either. My child and your child were born on the same day, of the same years. You see, it was a sign that we were meant to be friends. Do you remember? Italiana. La scozzese, tuo marito pesca il pesce e il mio lo fa fritto. Do you remember? At number five, at sixty. Too much, more, okay. then down, 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 down. Okay, and we have uh, eleven. Be quicker. Okay. Then I'm thinking again, then I'm taking the suitcase, coming back, looking at her. I think this. Ma tu ti sei accorta che il cuore te lo sei perso per la strada? You lost your heart! They came at midnight. Okay, stop. How did you feel, Sean? It makes me It's very strong. For it's me. A very strong. It was yes. amazing. To me too. For me too. Anymore. Yes. It's so strong what you do that now it's not, you know what I mean? Yeah. You go backwards and it's not just a protection. And I turn and, and I stay like that. You can even stay like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, beautiful for the Scottish side mm -hmm. because it's not being nasty, cruel people. It's, it's being honest, it's being embarrassed, it's being broken hearted by the situation. She was wearing my sister's shoes. I said to myself, these are my sister's shoes. I know they are. Le scarpe della festa. She wore them for her communion. What are you doing with my sister's shoes, you little Scottish girl? But I didn't say anything. I couldn't. Too scared. Too scared of a Scottish girl. I don't like Scottish girls. I don't like Scottish. Full stop. They must have taken them on that night. When they broke into the shop, they took everything. I look at the child in front of me and I say, out, out of my shop, go home. Go home. She ran away. Of course she did. It's not my fault if I've been left behind. It's not my fault if you've been left behind. It's not my fault if I've lost everything I cared for. It's not my fault if you've lost everything you cared for. It's not my fault if I don't like you. I don't like you. I don't like you. I, I don't like me. I don't like me. You know what's funny? I was born here. I am Scottish, like you. That's why they left me behind. I'm not Italian enough to be your enemy. I am not Scottish enough to be your friend.
You're Italian, aren't you? Yes, I'm Italian. But I was born in this country. That's what we used to say. And then they were quite happy with that. But if you said that you were Scottish, what do you mean you're Scottish? Who's your father? My father was Italian. You're not Scottish, you're Italian. Eh? I felt Italian, yes. I did, but a real Italian didn't look upon you as a real Italian. My grandparents' experience during the war was a very hard one. Um, my grandfather uh, was drowned in the Arundora Star. It was a prisoner of warship uh, which set sail on the 1st of July. It was an unmarked ship, and I've heard it described as a war crime. It was unmarked as a prisoner of warship, and so the morning after it sailed, uh, it was torpedoed by a German boat. My grandfather, of course, couldn't swim. I think many, many tons didn't swim of that generation. Um, and despite shouts of jump, jump, Emilio, and some people did survive, he just stood and went down with the boat. My father came back to work in his father's shop who had drowned in the Arundora Star. I, I don't think um, we can look back quite favourably. Then my father, he, he um, never recovered from the death of his father and his brother-in-law and his uncle, not really. I think that had a huge... Then they were whipped into jail, my father was in jail, and it's only now I can see he was only 33. That's young, <laughs> that's young. twice a year to Italy with a huge box, or should I say carrier, right? It wasn't clothes that was in that, it was food. food. <laughs> and the, the people at the, what do you call it, when they came through, the custom, that's it, I was trying to get to the custom. Never mind, fellas, eh, I know what Mrs. DeLuca's got in that, they could smell the sausages 
the aroma says, don't bother opening the case, because it's all full of Italian soup. Honestly, that's what she did. And I've still got my grandmother's machine that I'll show you. <laughs> you know, I've got the old fashioned, uh, and they're lovely. Making, making spaghetti was a very, well, I'm saying spaghetti, was a very big thing in the household that seemed to take the whole evening. And my grandmother, the proverbial up to her elbows and flour, that was lovely. And my mother always said she couldn't cook, but my mum cooked very well, really. But you didn't have the ingredients. You couldn't buy all the Italian ingredients when I was young. It wasn't, you couldn't just go to the supermarket because there wasn't such a thing. The supermarkets were just the corner shops. My mother was never in Italy, which I think is a shame, and my father was only there when he was three. He never went back to Italy, they never had money to go. And my grandmother always said to me, oh, this is Italy, and Italy is this, Italy is wonderful. So I was brought up in thinking Italy was wonderful, and which, which indeed it is. So in 1970, after I was married and had the children, um, I said, we want to go, I want to see Italy. And the, the thing that I have, the thing that strikes me was driving, because we had a car, driving and coming across the signpost which said, Atina. And I thought, I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. And going to Viticus, it was huge. Quando sono in Italia non sono italiana, veramente sono forse una italiana che abita in Scozia, ma veramente no, non sono italiana. And here, you know, people see me as Italian, so I don't, uh, it's quite interesting. Io non parlo italiano bene, I speak Italian dialect, because grandma spoke dialect. So I can understand Italian, but I don't speak it well, so very short sentences. <laughs> Italy is a complicated one. My relationship with Scotland is a complicated one. I am Gloria, I'm not Scottish. I am Gloria, I am not Italian. I am Gloria, who is neither one nor the other. Sono venuta qui a Edinburgh per motivi di studio e rispetto magari a altre persone che decidono di emigrare eh, la mia è stata una decisione direi quasi opposta io sono arrivata qui per un motivo e poi ho deciso di rimanere incontrai un ragazzo che poi diventò mio marito mio marito <ride> che, che è veramente imbarazzante dire. vabbè perché non sono abituata a dirlo in italiano mio padre è venuto qua in Scozia 36 anni fa. Poi io sono nata qua, pure io ho vissuto un po' di tempo in Italia e un po' di tempo in altri paesi, 
Um, però poi siamo, siamo tornati qua in Scozia e pure lui aveva tante, tante opportunità di andare, tornare giù in Italia di nuovo. Però um, lui aveva sempre quel dubbio, voleva, voleva sempre rimanere qua, non perché era il paese dei suoi sogni, però eh, certo era un, ci dava un futuro migliore e lui è quello è l'obiettivo, è quello l'idea. I miei genitori mi hanno sempre sostenuta e quando ho detto loro, in realtà piangendo, che l'idea di tornare in Italia eh, mi appesantiva, la sentivo quasi soffocante e che avrei voluto rimanere qui. Loro hanno colto subito eh, questo mio desiderio e, e mi hanno detto tu devi fare quello che ti senti di fare. E le mie radici sono lì, uh, in, uh, in Emilia Romagna, uh, torno perché mi manca la famiglia. Quando decisi di venire a Edimburgo erano contenti, effettivamente erano contenti, perché sapevano che comunque io venivo qua non per cercare un lavoro, perché, per un bisogno di questo tipo, non era una fuga di cervelli, <ride> era più che altro un'anima in viaggio che aveva voglia di sperimentare. Io non, non mi sentirò mai parte di un paese, completamente. C'è una battuta del mio personaggio che dice eh, l'unica cosa che veramente può cambiare le cose è il tempo. Se tu mantieni la memoria di ciò che ti accade e racconti ciò che, tocca, che ti accade e che ti è accaduto mm. ai tuoi figli e ai figli dei tuoi figli, solo in questo modo il cuore cresce, la testa cresce e la gente impara. Io penso che eh, quando in un paese senti che puoi alimentare la tua speranza verso il futuro, allora eh, capisci che ci puoi restare, puoi viverci nonostante le condizioni della tua vita presente possano poi essere anche più difficili rispetto al tuo paese di origine. Il profumo dei cappelletti della nonna Ada, <ride> mia nonna, e il caffè e l'espresso, caldi, meravigliosi, quello mi manca, sì. Sembrava patetico a me quando, quando vedevo per certi film degli immigrati italiani all'estero che si portavano la passata di pomodoro nella valigia invece de della giacca, però invece lo faccio anch'io. So thank you so much because you have been amazing and I mean it, I really do. So you are fantastic and I want you to believe it tonight because now the show is yours. So please use it, enjoy, you know, remember that, you know, it becomes a life if you enjoy it. Merda! <laughs>